Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all of you guys out there. Today, I am bringing you guys another really cool old Stratocaster, and this one has been modified over the years, uh, but it's still a really cool old Strat. It's got some very unique features that I wanna talk about in this video, and I'm also going to demo it for you guys through the 59 basement if you wanna check that out. It's gonna be more towards the end. And I should also mention this guitar has a really cool background story to it from the owner who's owned it since the early 60s and uh, I'll share that with you guys here uh, in just a bit. So let me tell you guys why this guitar is, is kind of messed up in a weird way. Let me first explain to you, I bought this guitar off Reverb. Uh, that's one of the known places that you can look to try to find these cool guitars, Reverb, eBay, etc. This guitar was advertised as a 5762 Strat, and you could certainly call it that, uh, what's left of it here, but it's got some very obvious issues going on. These two pickups have been replaced this volume knob looks to be replaced. This pit guard is not a Fender pit guard from what I can tell. Fender did not make a natural finish like this, so it's been stripped. The neck has been oversprayed. As you can see, it's kind of a orangey color. So there's certainly a lot of good bones here to, to build a really nice guitar off of. Um, and I can tell you that it, it plays actually really good. It's got jumbos on it and it sounds very cool, it has a very unique sound. One other weird thing about this guitar, there's like strap buttons all over. Um, as you can see, there's one here. I don't know exactly how that worked. There's a hole here from a strap button, there's a hole here, and there's also a hole up here for a strap button. I don't know why that is, but somebody had a field day with strap buttons on this guitar. And if you guys notice here on the pit guard, it has this really crazy wear pattern. I've never seen anything like this on a pit guard before. If you look at my 59 back here, it may be hard to see in the video, but there is a discoloration area right here where you would be picking, you know, and it wears through the uh, top layer of the pit guard into the black. And that's exactly what has happened here, all the way down into the wood, which I've never seen. I don't know how this happened, but it's this super smooth wear pattern and these very strange looking lines that go through it. So let me talk to you guys about some of the very rare features on this guitar. Part of the reason why I ended up buying it despite all the issues. Um, the most obvious thing, if you will look here, this guitar has a very figured grain to it. And this is something that most of the time you only find on a ash body Stratocaster. If you guys remember the Mary Kay build that I did, everything was wrong with this guitar, it was refinished, but we found out it wasn't ash body, we found out that it was blonde. This is the same type of wood, so this is ash. You could get this on the early Stratocasters 54 to 56. Uh, beyond that, you had to order a blonde Stratocaster to get ash. That leads me to believe that this possibly was once an old blonde Strat, or it was made pre-56. So if you look at the serial number on the neck plate here, it's in the 21,000 range. That makes it a 57 Strat. Now you cannot go just based on this neck plate alone. You have to look at everything together. But uh, if the story that I was told is correct, then this is a 57 body electronics, all the hardware, and a replaced neck. The other unique thing about this guitar is the serial number has a dash in it. And I would imagine someone on here who's more knowledgeable than I can explain how that's possible. But in the earlier years, did print some serial numbers with a dash. Some of them had a leading zero. Some of them were printed on the top or the bottom of the neck plate. Some were double stamped front and back. I have no idea why, but it's sort of a unique feature to find that little dash there. I've never had a guitar with that. And um, it, it was kind of a rare thing. It's just a weird kind of abnormality about this guitar but uh, it's something to talk about at least. Now the neck on this guitar is amazing. And when I was looking at the very grainy photos of, of this guitar, sometimes you can just tell it's an amazing neck. And 
You can see it's very dark on the back here. It's almost kind of like black in color, yet it's been refinished over. So I could tell this guitar was oversprayed. And luckily it was only oversprayed and not stripped and refinished. The decal on the front here, it looks original to me, really worn away and, and kind of turned gold because of this horrible overspray they did. I think that's the original decal. It has uh, what's barely showing there is the patent number, which you would get, I believe in 62, they started doing. Then you have the patent pending contour body decal. It's right in that era. This neck to me kind of feels like that wider D-shaped neck, very similar to what I imagine Stevie Ray Vaughan's neck was on his guitar. I have a 64 neck as well, and it's more of a full C shape, but this, this neck kind of has a shoulder on it. And then up here at the 12th fret, it's pretty hefty. Bottom line, this is a really cool neck. And the fact that it's just oversprayed means that with a little bit of elbow grease, you can take off this overspray on the back here. And now you have, you know, basically that, that played in strap feel because this is all the original wear that's underneath there. It's discolored because somebody played this thing for 60 years. So this neck, if you look at it at this angle, it has a veneer rosewood board, which is the curved board like that. You could get the slab, which was straight across or the veneer. That puts this neck at 62 at the earliest. Uh, from what I remember, this is a 62 neck. It has a uh, neck stamp, which we'll check out in a later video. And we'll take this guitar apart too and see if we can find a body date, see if we can confirm that it was originally blonde. I know it's crazy that I would have found two blonde guitars in the past six months because they are extremely rare, uh, more rare with gold hardware. And this guitar did actually come with two original pickups in the case, and I will show you those too. I'll, I'll put a little video in here of that. So basically, everything is here on this guitar uh, in terms of being vintage, except for the pick guard. And this is a five-way switch, but there was actually a switch in the case too, so. And one final thing I wanted to do before uh, I go ahead and play it for you guys. I got this email here from the owner who's owned this guitar since, he says 1960, but I don't know if that's a typo or maybe he's confused on that, but this neck is definitely later than 60. So he's had it at least since the 1960s, but Here's what the email says. Hi, Matthew, I bought the guitar used in 1960 at Leo's Music in Oakland, California for $185. It was sunburst then. Wish I had left it alone, but who thinks that when you're young? I sanded it down. It has been green, blue, red before I sanded it down again to the natural. I actually liked it the best in the natural wood look. The guitar has been many places in the Western US and Canada, and I was always getting compliments on what a sweet sounding guitar it was. I spent 17 or 18 years traveling with different bands and worked with some old time country stars like Furlan Husky, David Houston, and Freddie Fender, which I did look up some of those guys, and they were serious country musicians from like the, I don't know, back in the day, 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, had a good life as a musician. My second wife of 43 years plays bass and we kept playing full time until 1997. We settled down, got real jobs. I know the feeling, man. I am retiring this year at 75 years old, but still plays a duo with computer backing tracks on occasion. I hope this guitar makes somebody as happy and proud as I have been and is kept in service for many more years. I should have put new strings on it when I sent it to you. It makes a world of difference, but I wasn't thinking. Enjoy the guitar and treat it well. It has been a good servant for many years. Best regards, Dave. So that is something really special to have from the gentleman who's owned this guitar for almost 60 years. You don't always get a cool story like this with a guitar, but it just makes it that more special. It makes a connection between you and the people that have played this instrument. It's been all around the country, apparently played with played with these old country guys. It's part of the story of this guitar and most of the time these stories are just lost. Most likely this is probably a two owner guitar. At the time that he bought this guitar it was only three, four, five years old. And it should have come with a maple neck as this guitar has. But you know, they would warp, they would wear out. Those, the, the nitro on those maple necks was extremely thin. So next thing you knew, uh, it was totally played out and they looked, you know, ugly back in the day. People wanted a nice new guitar. Anyways, super cool story. 
Um, I'm going to open this guitar maybe later in the week. And then, you know, if you guys want to leave me a comment and let me know what I should do with it. But there's some things that I'd like to do to this guitar. Strip the uh, overspray off the back because probably nobody else will take the time to do that. So I would like to do that and get this neck playing right. Maybe do a crown on the frets. Uh, I want to put a single ply pit guard. If anyone has one for sale, please let me know. But the reissues from the original ones are pretty much indistinguishable. So I'm going to put a uh, proper 50s guard on here. And the final part of this is do we refinish it or not? It's a beautiful piece of wood. It's a one piece body. I forgot that. That, that also makes the guitar very unique. I mean, do you refinish it? I don't know. Leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think. Playing it today through the 59 Baseman gonna have some fun just go through the different positions thank you guys for watching if you dig it please subscribe like whatever you can do it truly means the world to me so let's do it